Edexcel A-Level Maths, Pure Paper 2, Summer 2018, Question 11. We're given that the fraction 1 plus 11x minus 6x squared all over x minus 3, 1 minus 2x is identical to a plus b over x minus 3 plus c over 1 minus 2x. And we want to find the values of the constants a, b and c. So the first thing to do is to take the right hand side and we're going to multiply each of those terms top and bottom to create the same denominator. So a, if we multiply top and bottom by x minus 3, 1 minus 2x. b, we, fraction we multiply by 1 minus 2x, top and bottom. And the final fraction with the c in it, we're going to multiply by x minus 3, top and bottom. So we've now got three fractions. They've all got the same denominator. So we can bring the numerators together in one big fraction. So we have the a times x minus 3, 1 minus 2x plus b times 1 minus 2x, plus c times x minus 3, all over x minus 3, 1 minus 2x. And this is equal to our original fraction. They've both got the same denominator. So we know that the top must be equal to the original numerator of 1 plus 11x minus 6x squared. Now we can use this to find a, b, and c. Firstly, by looking at the left, we can see there's only one place where we're going to get x squared to match up with the minus 6x squared on the right. And that is, with the a, if we times the x and the minus 2x together when expanding those brackets. There aren't any x squareds with the b or with the c. This is the only place. Now, multiplying them together, if we expanded the brackets, would give us minus 2x squared. But we want minus 6, so that a must be equal to 3 to multiply it by. Now, to find b, if we let x equal 3, this will mean the two brackets where we've got x minus 3 will be equal to 0. Hence, the first and third terms on the left will be equal to 0 and disappear. So we're just left with the b times 1 minus 2 times 3. And putting 3 in the right-hand side, we get 1 plus 11 times 3 minus 6 times 3 squared, which gives us minus 5b equals minus 20 b is equal to 4. To find c we're going to do a similar thing but this time we're going to set the 1 minus 2x bracket equal to 0 by letting x equal a half. So again the 1 minus 2x brackets will disappear we'll just be left with c times a half minus 3 is equal to 1 plus 11 times a half minus 6 times a half squared. So minus 5 over 2 times c is equal to 5 c is equal to minus 2. So there we go, we've got a is 3, b is 4, and c is equal to minus 2. We now want to prove that f of x is a decreasing function. Right, so f of x is our original fraction. In the first question, we worked out what a, b, and c must be to separate this into different terms. So we know that f of x is equal to 3, plus 4 over x minus 3, minus 2 over 1 minus 2x. Now we're dealing with decreasing functions, which means it's a good idea to do some differentiation. So if I just write it out, instead of in fraction form, we're going to put it as powers of minus 1, which makes the differentiation a bit easier to see. So f dash of x, 3 disappears. For our second term, the minus 1 comes to the front. We reduce the power by 1 to give us minus 4, times x minus 3 to the power of minus 2. For the second term, if we think of differentiating by parts, we are going to bring the minus 2, that's in front of the x, outside. We'll bring the minus 1 from the power down. We've still got the minus 2 that was originally there. And we reduce the power. So we've got minus 2 times minus 1 times minus 2, lots of 1 minus 2x to the power of minus 2. Simplifying this, putting it back as a fraction, gives us minus 4 over x minus 3 squared, minus 4 over 1 minus 2x squared. Now the denominators here are both squares, so we know they're both larger than 0, which means we've got two fractions of 4 over a positive number, hence the fractions themselves must be positive. So f dash of x 
is essentially minus a positive number minus another positive number, hence it must be negative, smaller than zero. If f dash x is less than zero, that means it's a decreasing function as required. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.